we have one of my favorite and, and many, many people's favorite baseball players, managers, and people, Don Mattingly. Welcome. How are you? Thank you, Brandon. As, as that ping pong match went that good, I think I should maybe – I could challenge you to ping pong too, maybe. I was I hoping – I don't know if I want to challenge Porzingis, but – Yeah, I was hoping and, – and, and, you know, I, I, I had the ability to go watch you coach um, and watch you play and watch you manage. But when I think about hitting – Right. I mean, do the players? I just gotta just do players actually appreciate and actually ask you for hitting help and advice? Oh, we talk hitting. Yeah, I don't know if players necessarily have to know that you could hit to to help them. Okay, uh, they, they they you know yeah they know, know the hit. age they know that you know they they have they can Google and they can look you up and they can look up your numbers and they kind of they check you out so they they know what what you did. Um. First of all, how's everything in Marlin land? I mean, you know, today they announced you're coming back, which you have a couple <laughs> more years left. You never really know how things are spinning in the media, but but how are things in Marlin land? I mean, it was an interesting season, but overall with Jeter coming there and a lot of attention. I think it's awesome. Uh, I think it's an exciting time in, in Miami. Uh, I don't think I've ever been more excited to be a part of something. I feel like uh, what we're building is going to be something truly special. Uh, I think with Derek's leadership and the leadership of the new uh, new ownership, I think we want to put something in place that's very special, and I think that's going to happen. Uh, you don't know the timetable of that, but uh, I'm really excited to be a uh, part of this. How good is Stan? He's pretty good. Yeah, he's a he's a dangerous cat. You know, he can hit the ball a long way, but I think more than that, he's a he's a complete player from the standpoint he can defend. Uh, he can you know he can run a little bit. He can throw. Uh, this guy hit for a decent average, so it's not like he's a just a strikeout all the time or home run. This guy can do a lot of things. Is he like one of those guys? And you hear about this, I wouldn't know because my I mean I never played on any kind of competitive level of baseball. Let's keep that between us. But is he like one of those guys who decides how good he maybe wants to play on that particular day? Like Manny Ramirez always said, like you know, he'd go in the club and say, "I think I'm going to get a double and a home run today." They'd go <laughs> get a double and a home run. Like he was that good. Is he that good? Mm. Like that kind of good good? I don't think he I don't think he looks at the game like that. Okay. Uh but he he's really good. I think he has to you know, like anybody else, he's got a swing that there's maintenance to it. He has to stay up with it. I think he's gotten better and better over the time from last year to this year. I think he got a lot better. I think the main thing with him is he I think he's figuring out how to stay on the field. And he played a lot of baseball this year. The most most games he played, uh if this guy stays healthy, he's gonna hit forty by mistake on a bad year. Uh, he's just he's just dangerous. He's that good. Well, a couple of things I got to ask you about because you're re you're remarried recently. Yeah. That everything you almost like in a complete reset now. Uh, or how's that going? Are you it's are going you, great? Are you it's like going a, great? Is there been we got a young son? Louis Louis going to be three at the at the end of the month here. Uh, things are good. I I tell a lot of people I I think uh, Lori's been really good for me as a manager. You know, in the game, she's very patient, very very independent on her their own level and uh, really doesn't need me around, honestly. And probably most of the time it, it's probably good that I'm gone. So It can't uh, be easy being uh, married to a manager. <laughs> it, it's easy for her, I think. Yeah. Uh, she's Again, she's independent. She's got her, her boys, uh, a life that she, she runs. She's not live or dying with, with us. But, you know, we're obviously she pays attention. She loves watching our players. She loves watching our team play. So it is something that we're able to, to talk about and discuss. Uh, but she's uh, she's an independent woman. How long does it take you to get over a loss? Uh, it depends what kind of loss it is. Oh, really? Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, but, I mean, they're all the same. I think we play 162. you got to understand the process of a season. You have to have been through those. Um, if your team's out there playing hard and they're giving you everything they got and you get beat 4-3 to three or 5-4 to four and, uh, you know, your guys pitch good, you play good, play pretty good defense, just got beat, uh, it's going to happen. Uh, a game that you play sloppily, uh, you don't seem like we're prepared. Our guys don't look like they're playing hard. Uh, those are a lot more difficult for me. And games that I make mistakes. You know, games honestly that you know I feel like, you know, I made a mistake out there. I should have should have went this way or that way. Uh, you know, so you beat yourself up a little bit about oh I, I let that lefty in one hit or too long, or I left that guy in one hit or too long, trying to get through the inning. Uh, so those games you beat yourself up also. But I think that's yeah. that's part of managing. You have to self-evaluate if you don't you have to be hard on yourself from the standpoint and realistic you know was that a good move or bad move it's a decision you make that doesn't work out but you still feel like it's the right move you sleep good 
you know if it's a decision you make that you you question yourself on then you don't sleep as good and you're on sports center <laughs> tell me about tell me about january 9th big charity event Mattingly. Char first of all Mattingly charities has grown it really has it's, nice uh, nice job on that yeah, you know, thank you very because much. i know you've been working at that a while with ray schultz and Sometimes, you know, it doesn't always take front and center. Usually if you forget to put a picture in or take one out to roll, yeah. that takes front yeah. and center. But well, this, this is, is good one stuff. that always feels good. This is good uh, stuff. Tell me about what's going on January yeah. 9th, though. Mattingly Cherries, we, we've started it's our third year at home back in Evansville. Uh, we started an inner city RBI program uh, there at, through the Boys and Girls Club. we got over 300 kids playing uh, baseball at this place. We took 12 kids to Miami for the All-Star game last year. Uh, we, we're, we're growing into education. We did a summer reading program for kids. Wow. Uh, continuing to move a, a pool program. A lot of different things, but all basically attached back to underserved kids in the inner city mostly. Uh, kids that we want to have an opportunity to make good decisions. You know, when you get into something, you want a kid to have a choice. And some of these kids don't seem to really have a choice, and we want to give them a choice. So, org. If you want to make it out there, is the event in Evansville though, or is it's it in Evansville? Now, uh, do you do stuff in Miami also, or we we do stuff in Miami? We had some things planned last year. The All Star Game kind of like yeah. uh, de detoured that a little bit, but we'll do stuff with the RBI program there through the you know, the Marlins Foundation. That's cool. We want to still be involved, uh, but Mattingly Charities. We want to continue to grow and, and help as many kids as we can. I know a lot of you are crazy out there. Go to all kinds of crazy places. Don't look at me like I'm crazy, but you can go to Evansville, get the plane ticket now, January 9th, but go to manlycharities.org if you want to find out about it. We're going to send out an email, actually, a little more details about it because I, I've heard like your events are really cool. They're fun. Very personal. Yeah, we want them personal, but yeah. relaxed. Toby Keith knocked our first one off. He came into Evansville and did a show for us. It was fun this year. Uh, Bernie's coming out. So we're gonna we're gonna do a thing with Bernie Williams nice. uh, in Evansville. We're gonna bring the Bronx to Indiana, and it's gonna be a fun event. I love Bernie, man. He just, just Bernie's he's awesome. the best. He is yeah, awesome. He is. And you're gonna and you're not gonna be disappointed because he actually did something for my for my charity, and he rock and rolled. I mean, he's he's really good. His band is actually really good. Uh, yeah, Bernie. Bernie. Yeah, I've, really. You know, it's good. funny because you get to see see gr Bernie grow up as a player. Uh, not necessarily as a musician from the standpoint of like his very beginning, but I used to, you know, the rain delays in old Yankee Stadium and Bernie's playing in there with that tile, uh, just picking the guitar and going, man, Bernie's pretty good. A couple more things. Pressure. It just seems to me when I watched you play, when I go back in time, you just always had the same look. I imagine you going into the stands and grabbing the kids' popcorn. <laughs> it, I know it's been shown a lot of times, but... How do you how do you deal with pressure and and what's your view on pressure? Well, I think it's preparation. When you're prepared to when you're prepared for a situation and and you you are ready for it, um, I think it's you don't feel like it's pressure. And I think you put pressure on yourself all the time. Uh, and what I would tell people is if you can put pressure on yourself in the first inning, in the second inning, in the fifth inning, and at bats that don't seem to matter when there's nobody on base and there's two outs and you're the hitter uh, and with nobody on. Then when you get a guy on second and the eighth and the game's on the line, it's no different, right? You have a good at bat, and, and then you simplify it to a point. But it's all about your preparation, what you're ready for, and that you're prepared for th the situation. I love that. The state of the game. What do you think about you know, so, you know, the, re the reviews and, and it seems like the games are going on too long, the, you know, the collision at home plate. I mean, do you think, do you think the game's healthy? Is there something particularly that you'd like to see changed or – uh, I think the game's healthy uh, in general. I like the I like the some of the initiatives that we're trying to continue to quicken the pace. Uh, I don't like talking about how long the games are because sometimes the game's long because it's a bang bang back and forth. I mean, we see the World Series games; teams are banging it out right back and forth. That's a great thirteen twelve game, right? And that's going to happen. It's going to be a long game. Uh, but I like the the things we talk about is pace. Let's keep guys in the batter's box. Let's get pitchers throwing the ball at a tempo. Um, you know, 25, 30 seconds between every pitch can't happen. That just can't happen from the pitcher's standpoint. And allowing the hitter to get out of the box and fix his glove after every pitch <laughs> is something that gets annoying, uh, honestly. And, it, and it, it hurts the pace because our game, it's, it's a game. There's a lot of strikeouts. There's home runs, but there's a lot of non-action. Walks, strikeouts, home runs. So we want people to come to a game, enjoy. There that needs to be action or pace. Uh, when it's happening quickly, you're getting a one, two, three, boom, good play, good pitch, got it out. Uh, let's change innings. Let's get it on and off the field. Let's let's play at a pace. 
where our fans can enjoy our game. Last question. You've managed L.A., Marlins, coached, and, you know, that insanity in the Bronx and with right. a lot of winning, a lot of superstars. You've played on a high level, obviously, captain. What do you tell yourself 30 years ago? If you could have a conversation with yourself and go back 30 years, 35 years ago, what would you tell yourself, knowing everything you know now? Um, probably enjoy the moments, you know, as you're going through them because when you're playing, you're just grinding, right? And you're playing a, a game – you, you get some hits or you don't get hit, you're just grinding, get ready for the next one. And and you get some hits the next day, you win a game, and you're grinding, getting ready for the next one. Um, you know, and you have a good year, you're grinding, get ready. You know, you, you have a year, you enjoy it for a couple of days, you get to the off season, you start working, right? So you don't really enjoy it as much as you should. Uh, I think that's one of the things I would tell myself to, to kind of enjoy it as, it as the flow is going on.